In this video, we will be explaining the process of calibrating a CX-1200. We will walk through the fine-tune adjustments that may be needed to achieve a good print quality and a straight, even wrap. This will be accomplished by making adjustments to three primary components, the printer, the rewinder, and the tensioner. Starting with the printer, we will begin by observing the label stock feed to determine what, if any, adjustments are needed. Remove the thumb screw and lift the tensioner into the upright position. Use a piece of tape to keep the paper deflector depressed. Open the small access panel on the front of the printer and remove the screw securing the strap. The bottom tray can be used to hold the panel open so we can watch the label feed through the printer. With the printer turned on and the label stock loaded onto the unwinder, send a small job of approximately 10 pages. We will not be taping it to the rewinder, instead just allowing it to drape over the side of the unit and onto the floor. If the label stock is twisting or bunching up inside the printer as shown here, we will need to make adjustments to the engine settings. To do this, we will need to access the printer diagnostics menu. Turn the printer off. While holding in the right and down directional buttons on the control panel, turn the power back on. After a few moments, the printer will reboot into the diagnostics menu. Use the directional buttons to scroll down and select printer setup. Then scroll down and select engine settings 1. We will start by increasing this setting to 8 as this has been found to be the appropriate setting in most units. Hit the return button, scroll down and select Exit Diagnostics, and wait a few moments for the printer to reboot. After the printer reboots, send another small job and watch the label stock as it feeds through the printer. It should remain even and fairly taut as shown here. If there is still excess sagging or bunching, Repeat the process described earlier and increase the engine setting by a few more increments. Next we will be watching the label stock as it exits the printer, observing any drifting or print flaws. Send another small job of approximately 10 pages. A good way to witness any movement or drifting in the feed is to place a post-it note with a pen mark directly over the edge of the label stock. Send a second job and observe the edge of the label stock in relation to the mark on the post-it for the entire duration of the print. Make note of whether the label feed drifts through the course of the job by a slight amount of less than one eighth inch, a large amount, or not at all. Here is an example of a print feed that is drifting. Determine if the movement is limited to the first few moments of the print or if it continues to drift throughout the entire job. Also pay attention to the quality of the print and watch for any flaws as shown here. Make note of the size and consistency of the flaws to determine if any following adjustments make an improvement. If the print quality is perfect and the label feeds straight out of the printer with no more than a tiny amount of movement, then the printer is properly calibrated and we can move on to adjusting the rewinder. If the print and feed is less than satisfactory, we will need to place a small shim inside the printer next to the fuser to correct any drifting, print flaws, or both. The purpose of the shim is to slightly change the angle that the fuser sits in the printer and correct any uneven pull that it may exert on the label stock. Start by turning off the printer and opening both side panels. Pull both clips to unlatch the fuser and lift it out of the printer. It is best to start off with a small shim like a ten thousandths or a fifteen thousandths, and then move up to a larger size if necessary. Adhere the shim to the small inside corner of the front side of the printer as shown here. Replace the fuser, close the panels, and turn the printer back on. Don't forget to replace the tape used to keep the paper deflector depressed before starting a new print job. Observe the new print job and determine if any issues with drifting or print quality have been fixed or have at least become less significant. If the results are the same or show some minor improvements, then repeat the process with a different shim size. While many printers can be properly calibrated with just one or two adjustments of the engine setting and a small shim, some units require more precise fine-tuning to achieve a straight label feed. 
These units may require a system of trial and error using a combination of different shim sizes and adjustments in the engine setting value. If necessary, continue making adjustments until the print is of high quality and free of flaws and the label feed is straight or as close to straight as possible. With the printer properly calibrated, we will now move on to the rewinder. Start by placing a cardboard core onto the rewinder. Send a small print job. When the label stock feeds about 8 inches past the rewinder, shut off the printer's power. Pull the label straight and tight. While looking down from above, determine if the rewinder assembly needs to be shifted slightly to the front or back so that the core is perfectly centered under the label as shown here. If necessary, loosen all four screws to move the rewinder. With the rewinder adjusted to meet the path of the label feed, we will now begin the fine tuning to achieve a nice even wrap. The tensioner can now be lowered into place and the thumb screw replaced. This time send a larger print job of about 50 pages. We will now be taping the label stock to the core and activating the rewinder. As the wrap starts, observe the edge of the roll as it grows bigger. If the label starts drifting from side to side on the core, make note of which direction it moves initially. Here is an example of an uneven, ragged wrap. To correct this, we will need to rotate the base of the rewinder so the core is perfectly perpendicular with the label stock. The direction the drifting label wrap moves initially can be a good indicator as to which direction the rewinder should be rotated to fix it. If it starts moving towards the back, rotate the rewinder clockwise. If it initially moves to the front, rotate counterclockwise. Start by placing a long piece of tape along one edge of the rewinder base to use as a reference point for any adjustments. Now loosen three of the screws on the rewinder plate and leave one tight. Using the tape as a reference, rotate the rewinder by a small amount, about 1 16th to an eighth of an inch initially, though we will adjust by smaller increments the closer we get to an even ramp. After making an adjustment, retighten the screws send another print job, and watch the quality of the wrap for any improvement. If, after a few adjustments, the quality of the wrap has actually worsened, it is possible the proper position has been overshot or that the rewinder should be rotated in the opposite direction. Continue this process of adjusting and retesting until the wrap becomes tight and consistent. Here is an example of a good quality wrap. Notice how there are some imperfections at the beginning of the roll. This is normal. Since the roll may take a short while to stabilize its wrap, it is recommended to wait at least 20 pages before making an assessment on the quality. If after multiple adjustments the wrap is unable to improve beyond a certain point, or if a tight consistent wrap is achieved but the quality of the print begins to deteriorate, then we may need to make adjustments to the tensioner. If a good print quality and wrap is already achieved through adjusting the printer and the rewinder, then no adjustments will need to be made to the tensioner. Otherwise, begin by checking the tension control setting on the back of the tensioner. Raising the panel increases the tension setting, lowering it decreases the tension. The optimal setting is a little less than max. If the tension control is not at this setting, loosen both screws to move it, then retighten the screws. Now place the tensioner into the upright position. By loosening both screws, the base of the tensioner can be slid towards the front or back. This movement will slightly change the distribution of the weight of the tensioner rollers on the moving label stock. Ideally, the rollers should be perfectly centered over the path of the label stock. You can use a ruler to determine which direction the tensioner should move. Experiment with this tensioner adjustment to correct any slight problems with the print or wrap quality. If at this point there are still issues which are unable to be resolved, it is possible that the calibration of the printer may need to be re-examined. When the unit is properly calibrated, it is a good idea to test a large job using an entire full roll, as well as running jobs using other types of label stock. Occasionally some calibrated units can see a deterioration in the quality of the wrap towards the end of a large job. This can be corrected with some fine-tuned adjustments. If the wrap suddenly begins to drift before the completion of a 1,200-page job, increase the tension control setting as shown earlier. 
If the unit is perfectly calibrated for one type of label stock, but doesn't wrap as well for another, try making slight adjustments to the rewinder to calibrate it to the new stock. Then go back to the original stock and see if it still works with that material as well. This concludes our tutorial on the calibration of the CX-12.